Greetings everyone, this is Donna Gilliland, founder of Most Training, with a quick power tip on how you can merge names and addresses onto labels of your choice using Microsoft Office Word. In my case, I'm working with Word 2013, but this would be the same if you were working with Word 2010 or uh, Word 2007. Now before I get started, I want you to know that this is a smaller piece of a mail merge webinar that I will be doing. I'm going to be doing two, one called Mail Merge Made Easy on May the 5th and one called Advanced Mail Merge Features on May the 12th. I'll be the guest speaker for all things admin. More about that later. Let's get you going learning how to merge names and addresses from an Access database onto labels. And by the way, if you don't work with Access, that's okay. This is going to be easy. And if your names and addresses are in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, you can do that too. I'm going to get started by working with a new document to demonstrate for you. Now, the first step is going to the mailings ribbon. Now, from the mailings ribbon, we are doing a mail merge. We're just going to be doing it on labels. From the Start Mail Merge group, choose the button Start Mail Merge. From the options, choose Labels. Now, when you choose Labels, you're going to have to know what the stock number is of the label that you're working with. So if you work with Avery Labels, uh, which is what I'm working with now, and the stock number I'm working with is 5160, which is their Easy Peel address labels. But you may be working with a generic brand of label, but they all have, uh, you know, a generic brand of Avery, uh, but they all have a stock number. You've got to know it. So grab that box and so that you can choose this from the list. So I've got the stock number chosen. Now I'm ready to click OK on the right. Now, as soon as you click OK, the label table layout appears. Then next up is choosing the file that has the names and addresses in it, and which in our case is going to be an Access database. But it all starts the same regardless of whether it is Access or Excel. It starts by going back here to your uh, mailings ribbon, which is where I am, and from the mailings ribbon in the Start Mail Merge group, we need the option Select Recipients so that you can specify where the file is and then this file will attach to what we're working with. Select recipients. Here are your choices. Type a new list. You'll learn about that in the upcoming mail merge webinar. Uh, you can actually create an access database on the fly with names and addresses. More about that later. What we need is a file that I already have and that you might already have. Choose use an existing list. Once the dialog box comes up for, it, it will default more than likely to select data source. And your file may not be in this folder, so you go and pick where it's at, and that's what I'm about to do now. I've got a practice file here from my courseware, and I'll use it. And get to the practice file. And then over here on the right where it says all data sources, I'm going to narrow this down to access databases so I'll just see only files in this practice folder that are access databases. And there's the practice access database and you will double click and then here's what's going to happen. You don't initially get the names and addresses. What you get first, and this is very important, you get a code that says next record. Every label has the next record field code but the first one. Uh, more about that in just a moment. This is important for you to know what are these codes. The next record code is the code that's needed by the program once you begin the merge process that tells Word go to the next record in this database or spreadsheet, whatever the case may, might be. Go to the next record and grab this name and address, etc. So all those need to be there. But the first label is empty and it is your starting point for either manually putting in the fields in the order you want or using a quick way called the address block. First, let's start with you looking at the option of the manual insertion. 
And again, this is still in the mailings ribbon, but it's in the group Write and Insert Fields. By choosing Insert Field, you would see a list of all the fields, the field names that are in the source file you're working from. And again, in my case, it is Access. Now, it so happens that the fields that are in this Access database I'm using they're the exact same fields that the quick method of getting all your fields in through a button called address block, then it matches up to that. And more about that uh, when we have the mail merge. But right now, I know that those fields are the same fields that the address block uses that Microsoft Word gives us to make this process a lot faster. So there's no reason for me to sit here inserting each of these uh, fields when I can get it done with the address block. So now I'm going to click the address block button. A box will pop up to show you a preview of how Word is going to lay out the contents of those fields. And I'm looking at it and that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Click OK and then what happens is a code comes in, address block. Remember the address block has reference back to all those fields that are in the Access database. But this is very important. That field code has to be on all the other labels in addition to the next record field code. This is how it's done and it's not done by you copying and pasting. Much quicker way. Back to the mailings ribbon again. On the mailings ribbon in the Write and insert fields, there is a button that says update labels. And this is where people go wrong a lot. They don't realize that code has to be on every single label, but it does. If you will click update labels, now look at my screen. Every single label now has address block in conjunction with the next record field code. And then I want to see how this is going to look with the names and addresses. And that would mean that while still on the mailings ribbon, in the preview results, there's a preview results group, and there is a button that says preview results. And as it tells you when you hover it, it is for viewing your merged uh, data. So I'm previewing it, and there they are. It looks great. So I didn't have that many names and addresses, but it all was pulled into the labels. Now, of course, from there, I'm just in preview mode. From there, I can choose to uh, finish the merge. But more about that in the upcoming webinar. But this should get you jump started in creating labels by merging information from another file. Now, so one last thing. Again, I will be speaking on May the uh, 5th and 12th on mail merge, but two different levels of mail merge, and I'll be the guest speaker for all things uh, admin. And I hope that you can make it. And in order to register, if you will uh, simply go to uh, my website, uh, to the events page, you will find Uh, all the information that you need about uh, each one of these Mail Merge Made Easy. And then, of course, there's going to be uh, one on advanced features. But you'll be able to use the images to click Get Details and Register. So I hope to see you there. I hope you learned something out of this power tip. Even if you don't get to attend our webinars, uh, I hope this got you jump started in uh, being able to merge uh, labels so again, this is Donna Golan, founder of Most Training, and I hope you can uh, join me on May 5th and 12th. Talk to you soon. It's bye for now.